Well, good morning. This is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com, and today is May 11th, 2017. And uh, this morning, we're going to take a look at Asia Week results so far over in London. Uh, we're going to take a peek at the Christie's uh, results as well as Sotheby's. Uh, Christie's auction was two days ago on the 9th. Sotheby's was yesterday. And uh, let's, go, let's just get right into it. Here's the catalog that, uh, that's been out there, and everybody's been talking about the cover lots for the last uh, couple of weeks, month. Uh, very exciting story about those. They did well. We'll get to those shortly. But let's first start with um, uh, something we had talked about last week that see how it did was this, this wonderful uh, looking bamboo car perfumer. It was an 18th century example. We'll, um, we'll blow it up a bit here so you can see it better. Um, this was a really nice example. Had a lot of detail in it, lots of uh, um, figures in landscape scenes, bridges, willow trees all over the place. Carved all the way down, there's a man on horseback. Just a superbly carved example with its original box. It's always nice to have the box, and the box was inscribed. And uh, the thing did very well. It more than doubled its high estimate, ended up selling for 65,000 pounds or roughly $84,000 US. It was a nice result. And uh, the next lot up was this. It was the white Islamic market uh, incense burner. And uh, I like this a great deal because most incense burners uh, with Islamic inscriptions on them are obviously are usually done in bronze, as you all know. This one, here it is, was done in, in jade. And I love the striations in the jade, the color shifts and so forth. It, it, gives it, it gave it a really nice feeling. And uh, I think because it was so unusual, um, some buyers didn't know what to think of it. And uh, it, 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 it did fine. It brought 13,750 pounds, but I think it was undervalued. I think this was a great buy, uh, or about $18,000 US uh, for a scholar's object collector. It's going to be a while before you come across another one of these. Uh, so bravo to whoever got it. it was a nice thing. And uh, then there was this, the Qusheng, uh, Ming late Ming Dynasty lacquered bronze figure. This was a big figure. It was around 25 or 26 inches tall, as I recall. And it also more than doubled its high estimate, but it had wonderful detail on it. Um, we talked about it a bit last week. We're going to blow it up here so everybody gets a good look at it. There it is. The way the face is done, very sort of a ferocious face in this very, very fine uh, castings all over. This is a fairly complicated casting, and they did a wonderful job. Here's an ingot that's fully articulated here, and uh, there's the paintbrush in his hand. Did really, really well. Uh, and it ended up bringing, um, 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 as I said, more than high, its high estimate. It doubled at um, um, 50,000, almost 50,000, over 50,000 pounds. So it just about doubled its estimate, or about $67,000. Terrific example. I like that. And then here was, of course, was the main event with the, the, the famous pair of Chinlung bases, bases found by a Christie's rep on a house call in the English countryside. They were about nine inches tall. There was a huge amount of interest in these because there's only um, you know, a few other single examples known and no pairs, um, uh, superbly well painted, and uh, they did awfully well. They brought 14,725,000 pounds or $19 million US. Uh, so somebody uh, got a great rarity to, for their collection and uh, spent some serious money to get it. And this was something, this, now here's something interesting. I, uh, I noticed in the, in the Sotheby sale yesterday, first this did very well the day before, which I thought was interesting because I like Blanc de Chine figures. But the Chinese market has uh, not been uh, hugely receptive of Blanc de Chines for quite a while. Suddenly they seem to be getting more and more and more interest. Um, and this one did very well. This was a big one, it was around 30 inches tall. But uh, a beautiful example. Uh, very fine detail all the way around. Look at that sublime face. My God, just beautifully done with the hair ornament up here with Buddha. Uh, exceptional quality all the way down um, to the robe, the, the, uh, the, the, the jewels hanging, and so forth. And it did very well. It brought $80,000 US or about 62,000 uh, 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 British pounds. They'd given it a strong estimate. Uh, they must have had a sense that the, the market was going to be there for it, and it, and it was. Uh, the jade market, the middle of the road jade market, if, if you take a look at the catalog and results, you're going to see a lot of items that didn't do well or they didn't sell 
uh, sort of uh, run-of-the-mill uh, jade figures and pendants and so forth. I think that the, uh, the volumes of fakes turning up in the market is hurting that area, and there's a lot of lost confidence at this time. And this was a surprise in the sale. This was something that was in the catalog. It was estimated fairly modestly at uh, 20 to 40,000 pounds, something like that. <clears throat> this beautiful double gourd, um, uh, chin lung, mark and period, uh, soft blue, sort of clair de lune glazed uh, uh, vase, a seven inch vase. And there was a lot of interest in this. Um, and it did extremely well. But look at the crackle on this thing. It had an am amazingly fine crackle, very well glazed, beautifully e beautiful even color throughout. And uh, it blew the, blew the roof off the estimate. The est high estimate was 40,000 pounds. It ended up selling for uh, 245,000 pounds or $317,000. So that's, that's, that's amazing news. And uh, then we're going to move over. We'll take a look at the Sotheby's sale. And uh, here it is. Here's the cover. Uh, this was the, the, the famous uh, lacquer dish that they were uh, very excited about, and it did extremely well. What's interesting is in the catalog, if you go back and look or look up it online, you'll, find, you'll see that this, this plate sold for a couple of hundred dollars back in the 60s. Um, and uh, you, when you see what it brought today, it would have been a good thing to buy. And uh, we're going to start, though, with this one. This was lot 102 in the Sotheby's sale. And again, an example of how well Blanc de Chine can do these days. But this is it. And if you look at the quality of the work, this again, like the, the previous Guan Yin figure and this figure, the uh, glazing and sculptural quality of this, this Buddha is, uh, is just, ex or Hotai, is just exceptional. All the way down, the, the, the rocky base that they have them on, uh, just wonderfully rendered. And these, these luxurious folding, fat glazed robes, the tassels hanging down. There is a tiny break right there, but but and, and there's one there, and there's one here. And those aren't really breaks; those are actually probably from the firing. But but those are the only imperfections I could see on this. But didn't make any difference to the bidders. This was a wonderful example of creamy, creamy, creamy glaze, and uh, it ended up selling for ninety thousand uh, British pounds, or you know what does that work out to? About a hundred and Twenty thousand dollars or something like that in the U.S. One hundred and ten thousand, but a heck of a nice thing. And uh, next up was this. This was that ewer that I talked about the uh, the other day because I just liked it. I just I like these blue and white Jiajing Ming ewers. Uh, this was a nice one. It had all these beautiful bronze mounts on it, and uh, it did just fine. It brought uh, twelve and a half thousand pounds. I think somebody got a really nice. It went over its estimate. Uh, well deserved, I think. And it's, I hope somebody got a nice piece for their collection out of this. It was a good thing. They don't turn up often. Uh, this was one of the disappointments of the sale. This, I thought, was a really nice uh, 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 you know, uh, copper red glaze plate. Beautifully done. Had a nice, uh, beautiful back on it. Just as good as they get. And uh, they couldn't get any traction with this thing. They couldn't, they couldn't get through the reserve. And it ended up buying in at about 260 or so thousand pounds, as I recall. Um, I suspect they were rather disappointed in that. And I'm not sure why, but um, uh, it just the market just wasn't there for it. Maybe it had been offered around or something in the trade. And nobody had bought it, so they put it in the sale. I don't know. But um, it didn't sell. And this plate did sell. This was that monstrous uh, Jai Jing um, uh, charger. The one that was, you know, 30 something inches in diameter, even with the cracks, had two fairly significant cracks. One of them you can see here without even blowing it up. There, look, right here. Big long crack running all the way around the plate to here, from the left to the right. And there was another one off the bottom that was also large that ran almost up to meet the other crack. Uh, but nonetheless, it did uh, very well. It ended up selling for uh, on the high end of its estimate at 75,000 um, so pounds. Somebody's uh, got a great rarity on their hand because there are not many of these plates this size. They sort of top out at around 20, 24 inches most of the time. This was a huge one. And this was one of the surprises in the sale was this Rue Scepter. Rue Head Scepter. It was estimated at 40 to 60,000 pounds. Ended up selling for 452,000. Uh, it was a, a beautiful example. They had tentatively dated it as 18th or 19th century. Um, and if you look at the work on it, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think there's much likelihood that this wasn't an 18th century piece. 
uh, just based on the quality, unless it was maybe early in the Chai Ching period. But uh, really great example, a lovely scepter, and uh, it did extremely well. So good on them. And then here's the, the big event of the day was this. This was the big lacquer dish. Uh, had, there was enormous interest in it. It was a premium lot, that, which meant that if you were there, you, you had to have a green paddle to bid on this thing. And uh, it did extremely well. And, and the price rose quickly on it. You know, this, this lot didn't last long. It went from uh, the open to the close, it seemed like, in just under a minute or so. And it went for 1.5 million pounds, uh, which is a couple of million dollars U.S., now think about that for a minute. It sold for a couple of hundred bucks back in the 1960s. Not a bad return. And uh, here it is. I think it's had a couple of owners since, but it, it, it originally sold in the 60s for uh, a fairly modest amount of money. And uh, then there was this really nifty bowl. I like this, this sort of Ming-style uh, Yongchen mark bowl. And it did well. It brought 37,000 pounds. I think it was well-deserved. Nice example. Good color. And uh, so on. And then we get over here to the uh, those sort of elegant Canton enamel uh, dishes. I just thought these were just so pretty. I just couldn't get over how pretty they were and how well done they were. And these were big. They were like 13 inches uh, each. And uh, they did fine. They brought uh, 10,000 pounds, which is a, a good price for those. And uh, uh, for the Chinese collector, uh, this, was, this was a good acquisition. Uh, not overly priced at all. And... and uh, a lot, of, a lot of bang for the buck, a lot of great artwork on those. And then lastly was this, was the famous horse that came out of the collection um, of, of, of this fellow, um, Vernon uh, Weathered, Weathered. And uh, it had been in a private collection for a long time. It had been on loan to the Ashmolean Museum for the last uh, 30 years. Just a spectacularly well done horse. And it did terribly well. It brought 116,000 pounds with a thirty to fifty thousand dollar estimate, more than doubled its estimate. Uh, but along the way, they had some issues. There was the uh, stupa that was in the uh, uh, Christie sale that got withdrawn. Uh, jade seemed to be a little bit soft. The copper red piece at Sotheby's couldn't make its way. So there's there's some things definitely happening in the market. But the one thing that you do know is that the the, the thing that we talk about a bit on here is that things that are coming out of estates, out of collections that haven't been around, haven't been seen by anybody, that are fresh, that are of top quality, tend to do awfully well. They do extremely well. And uh, this, this jade is just one example, plus the Ashmolean Museum exhibition history didn't hurt it any. And uh, that's about it for the week. Uh, we'll do the regular newsletter tomorrow, and uh, we'll, we'll go, the bottom sale is happening today, and we'll take a look at it, uh, their, their results uh, when it's over and uh, do something on that, all right? And we'll do the regular eBay uh, newsletter tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much for uh, watching, and uh, have a great week. And I hope you're over in London enjoying the sales. Bye-bye, everyone.